Hilbert's problems are a list of 23 problems in mathematics published by German mathematician David Hilbert in 1900. The problems were all unsolved at the time, and several of them were very influential for 20th century mathematics. The complete list of 23 problems was published later, most notably in English translation in 1902 by Mary Frances Winston Newson in the Bulletin of the American Mathematical Society. Nature and Influence of the Problems Hilbert's problems ranged greatly in topic and precision. Some of them are propounded precisely enough to enable a clear affirmative or negative answer, like the third problem, which was the first to be solved, or the eighth problem. For other problems, such as the fifth, experts have traditionally agreed on a single interpretation, and a solution to the accepted interpretation has been given, but closely related unsolved problems exist. Sometimes Hilbert's statements were not precise enough to specify a particular problem but were suggestive enough so that certain problems of more contemporary origin seem to apply, e.g., most modern number theorists would probably see the ninth problem as referring to the conjectural Langlands correspondence on representations of the absolute Galois group of a number field. Still other problems, such as the 11th and the 16th, concern what are now flourishing mathematical subdisciplines, like the theories of quadratic forms and real algebraic curves. There are two problems that are not only unresolved but may in fact be unresolvable by modern standards. The sixth problem concerns the axiomatization of physics, a goal that 20th century developments of physics seem to render both more remote and less important than in Hilbert's time. Also, the fourth problem concerns the foundations of geometry, in a manner that is now generally judged to be too vague to enable a definitive answer. The other 21 problems have all received significant attention, and late into the 20th century work on these problems was still considered to be of the greatest importance. Paul Cohen received the Fields Medal during 1966 for his work on the first problem, and the negative solution of the tenth problem during 1970 by Yuri Martyasevich generated similar acclaim. Aspects of these problems are still of great interest today. Ignorabimus. Following Gottlieb Frege and Bertrand Russell, Hilbert sought to define mathematics logically using the method of formal systems, i.e., finitistic proofs from an agreed-upon set of axioms. One of the main goals of Hilbert's program was a finitistic proof of the consistency of the axioms of arithmetic. That is his second problem. However, Gödel's second incompleteness theorem gives a precise sense in which such a finitistic proof of the consistency of arithmetic is provably impossible. Hilbert lived for 12 years after Kurt Gödel published his theorem, but does not seem to have written any formal response to Gödel's work. Hilbert's tenth problem does not ask whether there exists an algorithm for deciding the solvability of Diophantine equations, but rather asks for the construction of such an algorithm, to devise a process according to which it can be determined in a finite number of operations whether the equation is solvable in rational integers. That this problem was solved by showing that there cannot be any such algorithm contradicted Hilbert's philosophy of mathematics. In discussing his opinion that every mathematical problem should have a solution, Hilbert allows for the possibility that the solution could be a proof that the original problem is impossible. He stated that the point is to know one way or the other what the solution is, and he believed that we always can know this that in mathematics there is not any ignorabimus. It seems unclear whether he would have regarded the solution of the tenth problem as an instance of ignorabimus. What is proved not to exist is not the integer solution, but the ability to discern in a specific way whether a solution exists. On the other hand, the status of the first and second problems is even more complicated. There is not any clear mathematical consensus as to whether the results of Gödel or Gödel and Cohen give definitive negative solutions or not. Since these solutions apply to a certain formalization of the problems, which is not necessarily the only possible one. The 24th problem. 
Hilbert originally included 24 problems on his list, but decided against including one of them in the published list. The 24th problem was rediscovered in Hilbert's original manuscript notes by German historian Rudiger Thieler in 2000. Sequels Since 1900, mathematicians and mathematical organizations have announced problem lists, but, with few exceptions, these collections have not had nearly as much influence nor generated as much work as Hilbert's problems. One of the exceptions is furnished by three conjectures made by André Weil during the late 1940s. In the fields of algebraic geometry, number theory and the links between the two, the Weil conjectures were very important. The first of the Weil conjectures was proved by Bernard Work and a completely different proof of the first two conjectures via Eladic cohomology was given by Alexander Groth and Deek. The last and deepest of the Weil conjectures was proven by Pierre de Line. Both Groth and Deek and de Line were awarded the Fields Medal. This is somewhat ironic, since arguably Weil was the mathematician of the 1940s and 1950s who best played the Hilbert role, being conversant with nearly all areas of mathematics and having been important in the development of many of them. Paul Erdos posed hundreds, if not thousands, of mathematical problems, many of them profound. Erdos often offered monetary rewards, the size of the reward depended on the perceived difficulty of the problem, the end of the millennium, being also the centennial of Hilbert's announcement of his problems, was a natural occasion to propose a new set of Hilbert problems. Several mathematicians accepted the challenge, notably Fields medalist Steve Smale who responded to a request of Vladimir Arnold by proposing a list of 18 problems. Smale's problems have thus far not received much attention from the media, and it is unclear how much serious attention they are getting from the mathematical community. At least in the mainstream media, the de facto 21st century analogue of Hilbert's problems is the list of seven Millennium Prize problems chosen during 2000 by the Clay Mathematics. Institute. Unlike the Hilbert problems, where the primary award was the admiration of Hilbert in particular and mathematicians in general, each prize problem includes a million-dollar bounty. As with the Hilbert problems, one of the prize problems was sold relatively soon after the problems were announced. Noteworthy for its appearance on the list of Hilbert problems, Smale's list and the list of Millennium Prize problems, and even, in its geometric guise, in the vile conjectures, is the Riemann hypothesis. Notwithstanding some famous recent assaults from major mathematicians of our day, many experts believe that the Riemann hypothesis will be included in problem lists for centuries yet. Hilbert himself declared, If I were to awaken after having slept for a thousand years, my first question would be, has the Riemann hypothesis been proven? In 2008, DARPA announced its own list of 23 problems which it hoped could cause major mathematical breakthroughs, thereby strengthening the scientific and technological capabilities of Dodd. Summary of the cleanly formulated Hilbert problems, problems 3, 7, 10, 11, 13, 14, 17, 19, 20, and 21 have a resolution that is accepted by consensus. On the other hand, problems 1, 2, 5, 9, 15, 18 plus, and 22 have solutions that have partial acceptance but there exists some controversy as to whether they resolve the problems. The plus on 18 denotes that the Kepler conjecture solution is a computer-assisted proof, a notion anachronistic for a Hilbert problem and to some extent controversial because of its lack of verifiability by a human reader in a reasonable time. That leaves 16, 8 and 12 unresolved. On this classification 4, 16 and 23 are too vague to ever be described as solved. The withdrawn 24 would also be in this class. 6 is considered as a problem in physics rather than in mathematics. Table of problems. Hilbert's 23 problems are Notes carrot according to Gray, most of the problems have been solved. Some were not defined completely. 
but enough progress has been made to consider them solved. Gray lists the fourth problem as too vague to say whether it has been solved. Carrot problem 9 has been solved by Emil Artin in 1927 for abelian extensions of the rational numbers during the development of class field theory. The non-abelian case remains unsolved, if one interprets that as meaning non-abelian class field theory. Carrot it is not difficult to show that the problem has a partial solution within the space of single-valued analytic functions. Some authors argue that Hilbert intended for a solution within the space of algebraic functions, thus continuing his own work on algebraic functions and being a question about a possible extension of the Galois theory and others. It appears from one of Hilbert's papers that this was his original intention for the problem. The language of Hilbert there is, existence von algebraischen Function n, i.e., existence of algebraic functions. As such, the problem is still unresolved. Carrot Gray also lists the 18th problem as open in his 2000 book because the sphere packing problem was unsolved, but a solution to it has now been claimed.